Today we're focused in the section on your numbers and we're talking specifically about hemoglobin A1C. The recommendation is to keep your hemoglobin A1C below 5%. Let's take a closer look at what this means and how commonly this goal is achieved in the general population. Start with the definition. When your blood sugar or glucose is high, a larger amount of sugar sticks to proteins in your body. This is called glycosylation. Hemoglobin A1C is a laboratory test that can measure the percentage of your hemoglobin in your blood that has sugar attached. If you look at this diagram, you can get a better understanding. This is glucose. It's the common form of sugar in the bloodstream. These are red blood cells, and this is hemoglobin, which is a protein. Glucose attaches to the hemoglobin on red blood cells, and the percentage of red blood cells that have glucose attached is your hemoglobin A1C. The higher the blood sugar or the blood glucose, the more red blood cells will have glycated hemoglobin or glucose attached to hemoglobin. We use the hemoglobin A1C percent as a way of knowing a person's average blood sugar over the past three months. A hemoglobin A1C of 6.5 or greater indicates a diagnosis of diabetes. A hemoglobin A1C of 5.7 to 6.4 indicates a diagnosis of prediabetes. Optimal range is less than 5%. Let's look at the prevalence of prediabetes and diabetes. We said that prediabetes is a hemoglobin A1C of 5.7 to 6.4. More than one in three U.S. adults, 34.5%, have prediabetes. Let's look at the prevalence of diabetes. 2018 is the year I have the most recent data. 13% of U.S. adults have diabetes. Now that might not sound like a lot, except if you look at 60 years ago, less than 1% of U.S. adults had diabetes. So what was less than 1 in 100 is now more than 1 in 10 over 60 years. You can see that well illustrated on this graph. Less than 1% of adults in 1960 had diabetes. I'm looking at the orange line. And then we can see a rapid rise in diagnosis of diabetes. This goes up to 2015, where it was at 24%. At 2018, it's now over 34%. We have now an understanding of what hemoglobin A1C measures, how it indicates average blood sugar over the past three months. We know now the cutoffs for what's optimal versus prediabetes versus diabetes, and we see that there's this epidemic of onset of prediabetes and diabetes of the adult population over the past 60 years in the U.S.